What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and this past week was another busy one with multiple beta software releases from Apple. So on Tuesday, we got the release of iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 6, tvOS 15 beta 6, and then a few hours later, we also got watchOS 8 beta 6. And then on the next day, on Wednesday, we got the public betas for iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and tvOS. But even through all of those other releases, there was still no sign of a new macOS Monterey beta, and we still don't have it to this day. So not sure what's going on there, but hopefully we do get a new beta for that early next week. So again, a really strange release schedule this week, again, like last week. So really interesting what Apple is doing nowadays. But anyways, in this video, we're going to be discussing iOS and iPadOS 15 beta 6 and some additional new features and changes found in the software, along with how it's been performing in terms of battery life, bugs, and just overall performance. So let's first start off by going over some of these additional new features and changes. And the first one is inside of the messages application. So you will see here, it's a very faint difference, but you might notice this when you do it on your own. But if you haptic press on a message here with text, you will notice that the text size is actually bigger now. So it always, you know, kind of made it big, but now it's a little bit bigger. The text size is a little bit bigger here in beta six compared to how it was in beta five. So just a very minor change there. And there's also another change inside of messages as well. So if you wanted to record an audio message, all you have to do is simply tap on the audio message button right there, instead of having to tap and hold like you had to previously. So you can see there, just recorded all that and I can send it if I want to before you had to hold on that button right there. So I'm gonna pull up beta five over here. So this is beta five. And if we tap on that button right there, you can see it just, you know, gives us the option to hold it if we want to record to send audio, but it doesn't actually start to record it. But now on beta six, you can just tap on that and it will start recording right there. So could be a good thing if you use that a lot, or it could be annoying if you just accidentally tap on that and send an audio message on accident. Now we also have even more new features and changes inside of the Safari application, even more than what I covered in my what's new video. So in beta six, we got quite a few changes to Safari. So the biggest one is of course the ability to change the address bar from the bottom back to the top like we had in iOS 14. And there's actually an easier way to do that than going inside of settings. So if we tap on the two little A's down here, you can see up at the very top, it now says show top address bar. And if you tap on that, it just simply switches the tab or the address bar up to the top, just like so. And if you want to do it again, just tap those A's and show bottom bar. And you can go you know, back and forth between those right here without having to go into settings which is really nice. Now also one thing I noticed, but I didn't really make note of in my what's new video is that the bookmarks in your history now have a dedicated button when you're actually browsing. So before you had to go to like the windows right here and you know, go to a new tab and then it would show up right here up in the top left. But now while you're actually browsing because of this new design change, it actually shows up at the bottom now. And when you tap on it, it's just half the screen. It's not, you know, taking up the entire screen. You can actually scroll through like your history and your bookmarks and things like that right here. And again, you can see on beta five over here on the left, we have to go to a new window and then to a new tab. And then we can see bookmarks right up there up in the top left. If we tap on that, and then, you know, we get our favorites and everything right here, but it takes up the entire screen. So just some nice UI changes there to the history and favorites section right here. We also have a minor change to the download. So you can see when you download something now in Safari, we get the little blue download icon right there next to the two A's to the left of the web address. If you tap on that, you can see you go right here and then to downloads and it shows it up right there again in a little section where you can kind of scroll through it and it doesn't take up the entire screen, which is really nice. Now also if we go into our settings and go to accessibility and then down to touch, and assistive touch and then we go all the way down you will see that we have a new option here for use game controller so that was not present in beta 5 and it just simply says allow assistive touch to be controlled by game controller so if you have a game controller you can now use that with assistive touch also new in beta 6 is the ability to have a secondary click option for the magic mouse so if you hook up your magic mouse to your iphone or your ipad on ipad os 15 beta 6 you now get the option for a secondary click you can change what the secondary click does apple also fixed something that drove me absolutely nuts in beta 5 they centered the icons the little glyph icons here inside of the focus settings so if you take a look especially at like recording a video next to that you can see how it's like way up 
If you take a look, you have to look really closely, but you can see that the little glyph icons are not aligned with the text right there. They're a little bit higher than the text, but now in beta six, you can see everything is properly aligned as it should have been. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes go, Twitter has actually not crashed on me once so far this week. So I've been using Twitter. I use it, I mean, literally every single day, at least 10 to 15 times a day, I open up the Twitter application and it has not crashed on me one time throughout this week. So that is a great sign. It seems like Twitter crashing has been fixed, at least for me. Now I have seen people in the community poll who said that their Twitter is still crashing. So I am aware that it's still crashing for some people, but I would urge you to just update your application maybe because it's working fine for me now. I've not had a crash in beta six at all. And then also the Safari video player has been fixed. So I know I talked about this in my what's new video, but I did just want to confirm after going to multiple sites that the built-in Safari video player is fully working again here in beta six and beta five, it would just have a black screen with only sound, but now you see the picture. So that bug has been resolved as well. But as far as banking applications go, I still have issues personally with my banking application. Face ID is just completely broken. I can't use face ID to log in. I have to actually go to Safari to log in on my bank. Now I can't use the application, but some people are saying that there's, you know, I've been working all along. Some people are saying that theirs doesn't work again. It just completely depends on the developer of that application. And if it's not working for you now, it's probably not going to work until iOS 15 gets released to the public, unfortunately. And as far as performance goes here in beta six, everything is very smooth. I mean, I really have no issues whatsoever on beta six. So on beta five, I still had issues with the notification sounds, with Twitter crashing, with the Safari video player, but everything has been resolved here in beta six. I you know, have no real bugs that I've experienced so far here in beta six, which is a really good sign. And you know, that's kind of expected for a sixth beta, but still it's really relieving when you're using a beta on your daily device and you don't have to worry about as many you know critical bugs so me personally i haven't really had any bugs besides just minor ui you know bugs nothing that really impacts my day-to-day -day usage or like phone calls or messages or anything like that it's just very minor if i have any bugs at all which is great and as far as battery life in beta 6 it is very good but i honestly cannot tell a difference from beta 5. so i'm gonna go ahead and pull up some of my battery usage here on my main device my iphone 12 pro i've been using it quite a bit this week so you can see today a lot of screen on time but over the last 10 days you can see what i'm averaging quite a bit of time on the phone a lot of times it's just kind of sitting off to the side but you could see the type of usage i'm getting and you know how fast my phone dies or doesn't die so in this case in beta 6 i've actually been having really good battery life so here it was very hot the whole time i was outside next to a pool so it drained a little bit faster than normal but overall the battery life really nothing to complain about you can kind of see the applications i'm using right there but battery life again feels about the same to me as beta 5 no real improvement or you know more importantly no deceleration of the battery life no you know decrease no decline of that battery life which is a great sign and i'm hoping that you know in beta 7 and future releases especially like the point one and the point two releases of ios 15 the apple really focuses on battery life because a lot of people especially on older devices are just having issues still with battery life but overall for me on every device i've tested on including my ipad battery life has not been a complaint of mine at all all right so now let's go ahead and move on to the community poll so if you go to my channel right here and then go to the community tab you can see i asked this right here how has ios 15 beta 6 been running for you so far about 12,000 of you guys voted so i appreciate everybody who voted in that and we'll get to these 156 comments here in a moment but for me, I'm actually gonna go ahead and for the first time in iOS 15 beta history, for me, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and select excellent because I really have no major bugs and I have good battery life. So that applies to me and it appears that that is the most popular selection aside from using iOS 14.7.1. So 25% said excellent. You can see compared to beta five, it was 22%. So a nice improvement there. And you can see I voted for good in that poll because it was just good. I did have a few bugs that really impacted me, you know, like Twitter crashing and things like that. But in beta six, it's been fixed. And you can see there 25% of people are saying excellent, 17% good, 5% not so good. So some really good stats there. It seems like a lot of you guys are also seeing an improvement here on beta six, even over beta five. All right, so now let's go ahead and read some of your guys' comments. So you can see here, Masood said battery life and performance are great. So that's good. 
Sam here says battery life and performance seem more consistent overall on my iPhone 11. I am personally glad of the relocation of the refresh button in Safari as it was very easy to accidentally tap when searching. So yes, I agree with that. I mentioned that in my what's new video. I really love that change there. Performance and battery life are pretty solid. Battery life has definitely seen big improvements. Performance feels consistently smooth overall. Bug and wallpaper section still present, where when you tap on the wallpaper home screen preview, I don't see the widgets on the preview, but also I go back to the home screen straight away, all my widgets vanish. So that's interesting. I've not faced that bug right there. Uh, appreciate you, Silo, for that comment right there. Beta 6 running good here on the iPhone 12. I couldn't tell the difference between having a beta or not for how smooth and stable it is. Yes, I agree. I definitely and feeling that on beta 6 for the first time since being on iOS 15 betas. I have a success that lasts around an hour. Their performance is way better and battery can last nearly half a day now. Wow. So that's some nice improvements there for A6S. Pretty good overall for beta 6. I have a very minor bug where notifications are sometimes cut off, which hasn't happened since beta 2. So interesting. I did used to have that as well on betas one through maybe two or three as well. So interesting to see that that has come back. Charlie here says that since share play has been cut, I'm not going to upgrade my device to beta six. So I've seen a few people say that, but the thing is once iOS 15 gets released to the public, you know, nobody's going to have it. So you're really going to have nobody to share play with anyways. So you may as well just go ahead and update because nobody else is going to have that. And that's the whole point of having share play is to be able to do it with somebody else. I had visual look up till beta four, but after beta five, it's gone. And so beta five, we're talking about beta six here. So I'm not sure what he's talking about, but I have had the issue with visual lookup just kind of, you know, appearing and disappearing. I've talked about that here on the channel with this device specifically, the 12 Pro Max. So it looks like it's going to be a thing for people to just not update because of the FaceTime share play feature. And you can see here, NG said, I haven't updated as of yet because I enjoy the FaceTime feature with friends. So maybe, you know, some people will just simply not update their phone and just stay on beta five. I'm not sure, but looks like some people are still, you know, kind of having a hard time updating because of share play being kind of nixed and removed. Having audio volume issues while on FaceTime, nor the buttons or volume slider work. They go up and down, yet the volume stays the same. Happens both on AirPods and speaker. So that's interesting. Maybe go into your sound settings and make sure you're changing the volume for the right thing. Make sure you're not changing the media volume and that you're actually changing the audio for FaceTime. When watching a video in the files app, when I pause the video, I cannot unpause it. I have to exit the video, then come back. So interesting. That might be a bug for some people in the files apps. So just be aware of that. I've not tested that myself personally. It looks like beta six also fixed an issue with the game pigeon message. So if you play games with game pigeon, looks like that may be fixed as well. If you had any bugs in beta five, those could be fixed here in beta six, according to tech talks, no bugs, but I can't haptic hold on low power mode. So I wonder if that's been fixed here in beta six. So it looks like I can still haptic press on that right there. So maybe not everybody can do that on low power mode and the control center. But thank you to everybody who voted in this. I do read, of course, every single comment. So thank you to everybody who commented as well. I read every single one of your guys's right here. And of course, if you guys answered this question right here about how is battery life, of course, you would have already seen there is a big selection of people saying it's great, people saying it's terrible, people saying it dies in an hour. And again, they're going to say that no matter how good battery life is. So it's always interesting to see what you guys have to say about battery life there. But anyways, thanks again to everybody who voted and commented on this it really helps me understand and helps you guys understand how the software is running for the masses and not just for me all right so now what is next for apple so next week we should be seeing ios 15 beta 7 so with beta 6 that was the beginning of the one week beta release schedule so we got beta 6 on the 17th right there and that was just one week after the release of beta 5 so i would expect to see beta 7 maybe on the 24th or on the 25th that would be about a week after the release of beta 6 so i would expect to see beta 7 then and again after that we should see a beta release every single week leading up to the final release of ios 15 which should be sometime in mid to late september we'll have to wait and see on that now i would expect some september event invites to be going out relatively soon probably within the next few weeks i would say so be on the lookout for that that could also give us an indication as to when we could expect to see ios 15 get released to the public. And as far as iOS 14.8, a potential beta one or just a final release of 14.8, that is still a possibility. Again, I'm surprised that we don't have that already, but we could see that next week as well. It's just really hard to say with iOS 14 at this point. iOS 15 is a lot more predictable, but iOS 14.8 could very well be coming next week 
or we could even see a 14.7.2 because some people on 14.7.1 are reporting of a no SIM issue or just issues with cell connectivity and it seems to be pretty widespread. So if we don't see a 14.7.2, I would expect to see a 14.8 very soon, but if not, we could even see 14.8 go into beta next week. So we'll have to wait and see. And of course, like usual, make sure you guys are following me over on Twitter if you want to be notified when you know some of these new betas come out. And you guys saw that crash there with Twitter. That was very interesting. I've not had that at all on my main device. And I just, you know, kind of raved about Twitter not crashing, but apparently it did crash just on launch right there. But anyways, guys, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my future iOS 15 coverage, including iOS 15 beta 7 next week. And of course, I will be covering a lot of stuff in iOS 15 when it releases to the public. So make sure you are subscribed for all of that content. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.